Alright, here we are then, a new series that I'm uh, looking at starting, all relating to iRacing. iRacing's a sim that everyone's heard of, um, you know, it's probably the most popular platform for online sim racing, that you hear the likes of Max Verstappen competing in Formula 1 one weekend and winning uh, an event in iRacing the next. So it's certainly um, got a lot of exposure and lots of people wonder what they're going to get for their subscription cost. You know, it's unusual in um, the world of computer games and sim racing to pay an ongoing subscription um, and have to buy cars and tracks on top of that. So a lot of people were interested in exactly what they're going to get for their money, how much it's really going to cost them. Um, and that's something that I'm proposing to do with this series is almost a play along together where we can find out how much it's costing me how much I'm enjoying it, what the racing's like, how competitive I am, whether or not the split system um, based on safety rating and I rating works and whether it leads to good races, which I'm pretty sure it does, but, but let's find out. Um, I should say I have used iRacing before, but that was about three years ago, so I'm expecting a lot has changed. I'm by no means an expert and um, I'm kind of looking forward to going along with this together really and just um, experiencing iRacing really as a new person again um, and and seeing what it's truly like and how much it's truly costing. So with all that in mind then I think really what we need to do is um, go to the iRacing website, have a look at the subscriptions, sign up, download the client, have a little look at the UI together and um, let's see if we can have a go at our first rookie event depending on how much time we have left in the video. So let's go for it. Here we are then, straight to iRacing, but let's have a look at the memberships. So this is the first thing that, that greets a lot of new people is that they're potentially interested in iRacing but you know they see immediately um, $120 for two years um, which I have to say is very cheap compared to how I remember it being but it puts a lot of people off you know they're used to spending between 30 and 50 pounds say sometimes a lot less than that for different sims and suddenly you know they're going to be spending over a hundred dollars so um, it does put a lot of people off but I think what we'll do looking through here um, right now is I'm going to go for the one year subscription um, sign up for that it's a decent amount of money off um, as a new member and um, we'll go from there So I'm going to fill all this out and uh, through the magic of the internet you won't have to sit here whilst I type away. So I filled out that first list, um, it's just my email address and uh, my home address, a bit of information. first thing I get here is um, a couple of um, terms of use and privacy policy, um, which I'm sure we've all downloaded and read thoroughly before going to the next stage. So we can see here um, that I've got discounted subscription as a new member at the moment. It's usually $110 and I'm going to get it for $79.20. Um, unfortunately I don't have any kind of promotion code at the moment so um, I'm just going to go ahead and pay and again through the magic of the internet I shall just click through all this and uh, you'll be back with me shortly. So here we go, that's all paid for. Um, this is our standard billing confirmation and uh, I suppose the next thing really is just going to be to download new content. So I'm just going to sign up sign in now with the information I just logged in with enable auto login okay welcome to iRacing so um, it's a pretty small file to download initially so let's go for the download that started the installer I can't imagine that's going to take too long now I know there's a big thing with iRacing around the sporting code that they very much try and make it feel like real life um, it's all about the community around it and ensuring that everyone's racing for the same reasons which is to have a good race not to smash into each other um, although it does happen obviously so um, I'm not surprised to see this boring code quite so early on in this guide it's great to see that there's some information on the UA which has definitely changed a lot from when I last was in iRacing which I'm looking forward to because um, it was a little bit clunky when, when I was certainly here and this is what I'm really interested in really is the license classes. Most of my focus is going to be on road licenses, although I am definitely going to take the opportunity to do some oval racing, something I really don't know anything about. Um, but as you can see, there's six licenses within each class, Rookie, DC, B, A and Pro. Um, so we'll start at Rookie and the, uh, the target is to make our way as high as we can up those ratings. Um, explanation there around the safety rating and the I rating 
which do fluctuate quite a lot I think when you're new and they sort of level out a little bit more as averages do once, um, once you've got a few more races under your belt. So the series and season is going to be interesting um, once I've got out of the rookies I think this is when I can probably have a look at, at some of these and um, that's going to be really interesting to see how regularly they run and what the racing's like and if there's one that really is the better one because of the amount of people that are involved or if they're all pretty good so I'm really looking forward to um, experimenting a little bit with some of those. So this is really interesting that they've got some references even in here now. Um, obviously the sporting code again, some of the how-to videos, but also some bits with the driving school, um, which would be interesting to see what they cover in there, if it really is very basic or if it's quite useful for people that know a little bit about sim racing but want to work on certain aspects of their driving. So I'd definitely have, um, try and find some time to have a look at some of those, and that would be really interesting. So the next thing in simple terms is um, to install iRacing. So I'll let that do its thing and I'll be back with you shortly. Come up um, as part of the installation um, just to install anti-cheat software. Um, not something I know anything about but I must say from a kind of independent point of view it's quite nice to see something like that. I don't know how effective it is, how well it works but um, it gives you a bit of a confidence boost really that you're not going to be against anyone that's cheating and uh, it's all fair and uh, level playing field. I have to say so far I'm quite impressed with the ease of the installation and the amount of extras you get on top of just the sim so I can see where some of the money's gone, some of the videos, some of the um, tutorials that they've got and, and the extra little bits of software here. So as far as I'm aware now that's everything installed I think it probably needs a um, restart for everything to be uh, fully up and running so I'll do that now and I'll be back with you. So here we go then, this um, really is the first boot on, on this PC and for some time on iRacing. Straight in with Donington Park in the background there though, fills me with uh, a bit of excitement. Right, let's log in. So clearly this is where um, the actual file size comes from for some of these vehicles here. Obviously the first install was quite small. Uh, so now we can see some more of the vehicles. So I'm guessing the ones with the shopping cart there means I don't own them um, but you can see there's a couple there, Cadillac, CTSV race car, uh, that Charlotte Motor Speedway so it's tracks and cars here um, that we own stock. But you can see as I roll through here there's plenty of cars that we don't own, plenty of tracks we don't own which is great, you know, means there's a lot more to the sim than than what you first get but at the same time makes me a little bit nervous that there's a lot here that I don't own um, that is going to cost me a bit more money but I have to say there seems to be quite a few as well that um, we do own straight away so I shouldn't complain too much so I think we will select all there we go now it's a 26.82 gigabyte update so let's do that so I've got a pretty quick internet connection but clearly this is going to take a little while um, so I will be back with you shortly. Here we are then. Uh, everything's installed and ready to go. Um, considering the size of the download, it was all the installation and everything was all pretty quick. Um, no complaints there. Certainly don't be uh, registering, downloading if you're you know, you've only got the next hour to uh, to have a race or something, and you want to get straight in. It does take, you know, it's got a decent number of tracks and cars, so it takes a little while to to download and install. But here we are. So, um, just my first impressions is the UI looks a lot better than um, I remember it being previously. Clearly, along the top here, I've got no credits. Um, Ten, nearly eleven thousand members online already. I'm up to date, and these are my license. So, I'm rookie road, rookie oval. Rookie Dirt Road, Rookie Dirt Oval, and this is, I uh, assume, my profile. So there we go, it's called me Chris Dunster 2, and that will be because of my account from uh, about three years ago. I don't mind that, I'm quite happy with that. Um, and uh, obviously the first thing I'm going to do is switch to Dark Theme, because uh, that's better in everything. Um, have a look at the profile. You can see nothing about me at the moment, we haven't put anything in. Uh, we'll see a bit more info about the licenses. No stats at the moment. Um, I think we can customise. Oh wow, not just a helmet anymore, it's actually the whole driver that you can customise, so we'll definitely have some fun with that. Um, and obviously awards that we haven't got any of at the moment. 
So with that in mind, let's have a little look as if we were going to go racing right now. We're not going to go this time, just want to get everything set up, registered. Next video, uh, we'll have our first rookie race. But let's uh, let's click on go racing. So here we are then. Um, these are all the next upcoming races at half past eight. There's a couple down here at 8.15. And obviously looking at the licenses here, um, we can only participate in rookie. I'm sure we can filter in some capacity. So let's just put the rookie licenses on. So then we've got uh, practice sessions, official practice sessions, race sessions here for the rookie class. So right now it looks like we've got um, Rallycross, Street Stock, which is um, Oval, I think, Pickup, uh, Advanced Legends Cup, and the uh, Rookie Pro Light 2 truck. I'm naturally going to levitate towards something involving the MX-5 Cup um, because that's more uh, my kind of driving as a rookie on the road is what I'll be looking at. So there we go, the MX-5 Cup Season 2 fixed. That's an official practice session, so uh, that is what we would be signing up for next. But I think what we'll do, um, just as a little intro to uh, how first you check wheel pedals and everything are being picked up and uh, what the onboard UI looks like and the cars look like. I think what we'll do is we'll just go for a test drive. So there's our settings. Let's test drive. So I'm assuming because it's the first time I've loaded this, this has just popped up here for the graphics options. We'll just go with auto configure. We could definitely have a play around with those um, later down the line. So I'm running the triple screens. Um, I don't want to run in the window, I want to run full screen, I don't want to run safe mode. So that looks all good, so um, let's go for that. Here we go then, we're loading up. Um, interesting to see what the load times are like. Uh, R Factor 2, which is the sim I know the best, certainly takes a long time to load, so uh, I'm not expecting anything outstanding here. I'm more than, more than used to things taking a little while. I think really what I'm interested in now, just get in the car, check everything works, just have a little feel for what the car feels like around here. So here we are then, um, straight into the practice. Configure control is obviously our first option, so let's do that. Uh, do we want to use the auto clutch? I mean, not really, although I have got my pedal set up very much for left foot braking at the moment, but let's, uh, let's calibrate the clutch. Uh, I'm going to leave everything as it is at the moment. Um, I'm going to have to look at my field of view and things because clearly that's not going to be set unless it's calculated that itself, which it might have done. Um, I haven't set a speed limit or anything like that, so let's put that on. So, done. Test, here we go then. First drive in a long time here. So that's the thing with using the clutch and just having the uh, paddle shifters is quite weird. I'm sure I'll get used to it. So the field of view definitely is not how I would like it. at the moment, straight out of the box. Okay, so there's a bit of a feel to the back end, which is quite nice. Feeling toe is quite tricky with my current pedal setup. deep air on the brakes. I'm supposed to just be driving slowly and feeling what the car feels like. This is what always happens though, right? The 
say the track detail is really good. Got the cement dust down there, really makes it feel realistic. Field of view is horrible at the moment, but we can see it just that. So I'm definitely going to need to adjust my pedals because healing toe really is that at the moment. It's is fully sideways. Quite a nice feel through the wheel though. Very light, but I suppose in real life in a Mazda MX-5 the steering is going to be quite light. shifting yet, but I will get there. I have to say, I'm really impressed with the way that it looks. I racing historically has never been the most graphically advanced game, and it still isn't, but the effort they put into the look at the track surface, the barriers, the gravel, all makes it feel, all helps to make it feel a little bit more realistic. Enjoying this already, straight out of the box. The field of view is awful. But that won't take long just to tweak that more to how I'd like it to feel. So just probably a little bit to do with the you know, I racing can't know the angle I've got the screens at, so. Good. It feels nice. Definitely increase the uh, force feedback a little bit, just to get a little bit more fidelity for the feedback of the curbs and the road more than anything else. without doing any tweaking. I'm enjoying that. Well, that feels straight out of the bag. Um, I'm going to need to do some work on the force feedback and the, and the field of view to get it how I want it to feel, but that, lots of those things are personal preferences. Um, so, yeah, it's not a big deal. It's just things I need to have a quick look at. Definitely need to um, change my uh, my car livery and uh, helmet just because, um, and get into our first rookie race. But uh, I think this is all positive. Um, I'm really pleased with what I've decided to do with this series, and I'm really pleased with how iRacing feels straight out of the boxes is. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Um, if you did, please do subscribe leave a comment let me know what you liked what you didn't like give it a thumbs up um, if it's your sort of thing you'd like to see a bit more that'd be great it really does um, mean a lot to me and uh, I think this could be quite an interesting fun series if there's something you'd like to me to look at because you're thinking about getting eye racing or you just want to know a little bit more about it this is a great opportunity for me to do that um, and I think we can have a lot of fun trying to progress out of rookies uh, see how our first races go there and also have a go at some oval racing something I know nothing about and I think iRacing could be a really great place to uh, Do some practice and then try and do some of the rookie races with that. So thanks very much for watching